Good afternoon. This camera's on now. Good afternoon. Take two. All right. Yeah, I was watching Jerry Seinfeld um, do an interview the other day, and he was saying the difference between television and film is that when you're doing television, you, especially sitcoms, you have a live audience. And so the live audience is only going to hear that joke for the first time one time. Where in film, it's cut, take, et cetera. So that's why I like the theater, because the theater is real time. It's actually happening, right? Uh, and that's the way we are. When we're sitting with the buyer and seller for the first time, that's the first time we're sitting with them, and that's what we're uh, proposing. So I want to take up the list of things that, that were, were identified as important to buyers and sellers, uh, and then talk about how we, as a uh, company, can address those. Does that make sense? Right? The survey says A, B, C, D, F, and G. These things are important to buyers and sellers. So being able to negotiate the best possible uh, price. I think Fritz referenced that, right? Um, honest and trustworthy. Our reputation, right? Uh, people like to pick friends and family members to work with. They want to know that we have a knowledge of their neighborhood. Uh, they want people to have a caring personality. Um, they want someone to have timely responses. And uh, they want someone who seems accessible via tech. Uh, and then lastly, the association with the company and then the um, active in the community, right? These are the things that people find important. So uh, negotiating best possible price and terms. So wherever you are with your skill set and ability to negotiate, that's where you are. Right? You get that? That's, that's where you are. Getting better at that is what our goal is. So Brandon had a class or has a class that he offered negotiation. CAR has a class that's offered a negotiation. Uh, I'm sure the bowl training is going to offer education on negotiating, right? And then uh, the designation. There's a CAR designation. I think, excuse me, as the buyers for the first time um, I, in my career uh, will begin to scrutinize the agent that they're selecting in a greater degree than they ever have. Buyers, once once they once everything unfolds, and let's say it's June, and the buyer is going to be presented with the uh, fact that they're paying either through adding to the sales price or they're paying uh, out of pocket for the services of their agent, they're going to begin to scrutinize their agent a lot more. So our ability to negotiate is is vital, and our ability to uh, gain designations to put next to our name, I think is gonna add more value. Does that make sense? Um, let's talk about negotiating price and terms for uh, for a second. James. Uh, is there a right or wrong way to negotiate? And let me expand a little bit more on that. If, you, if you're a, uh, if you have a listing, right? You want that extra to go as smooth as possible, right? You're trying to get top dollar for your client and you're hoping that the other agent doesn't negotiate or doesn't really try to fight a lot for their client, right? Because you have the best interest uh, for your seller. Opposite side, now you're on the, you're, you're representing the buyer and you obviously want to nickel and dime. Maybe you want to, you're going to see all the costs. Maybe you, you know it's been on the market 40 days. You're the only offer you have and you know that once you're in there, you're you're gonna try to go for. I mean, so is there a right or wrong way to negotiate, even if that means taking advantage of the other agent or for the seller? Well, I I would just I would rephrase it from taking advantage to uh, doing everything that you're supposed to do and fulfilling your fiduciary duty to your client. So you're not taking advantage of the other agent or uh, the seller. Let's let's say for example that you wrote an offer on a property. Um, and you got the price to come down to X in your negotiation. And then for whatever reason, that buyer went away and you got another buyer that came in. You already know the seller could come down to that point, right? So starting at that point or getting to that point is just simply using what you know to negotiate. So 
are, if you're asking me, are there are there better ways to negotiate than others? Yes. If you, are you asking me, are there uh, things that are ethical and some things that are questionable? Yes. Right. All those things are true. What I'm saying is that you want to make sure that as it relates to negotiating, you make that a priority in your daily in your daily journey. Right. By grabbing the education that's out there, uh, who's read or is familiar with Never Split the Difference, right? Uh, is it uh, Chris Voss? I think that. Yes, right? Former FBI agent, right? It is It is next on my list. It's on my bookshelf. I think people who are on my Zoom calls can see it back there. Uh, it's, it's a book that's highly recommended by everyone I've spoken with. And it's from Chris Voss, who's a former FBI hostage negotiate, negotiation, negotiator, right? So that's a group, right? I mean, talk about negotiating, right? That guy is negotiating. So let's take advantage of, of that sort of thing. Negotiations and our ability to negotiate is critical. And it's something that, let me ask you this, can, we, can the buyer find their own house? Yes. Right, right, can they, can they find their own home? Oh, yeah, can they find school information? Right? Can they find out who the previous owner was? Yeah. They can go to the county if they want and find the chain of titles. Right? What they can't do is negotiate. What they don't really do is negotiate. They, they, they. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They 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 may they may think they can, but our that's our job. Our job primarily, and I love what Fritz said about you know stat, uh, tracking the statistics and saying that it is, you know. Uh, my buyers will typically, um, uh, on average, most people that I represent um, realize a savings of two and a half percent off of the list price. When in the marketplace, list listings are selling at one hundred one percent. Distinguishing that difference, make negotiations something that you reference again because we know that that's important to them. They've told us that our ability to do that. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Buyer, uh, as you can see from my uh, profile, uh, I'm a certified expert negotiator uh, as awarded by the California Association of Realtors. What that means is that I've gone through a rigorous training process uh, that's designed to improve and enhance my negotiating skills so that I can represent your best interest at the negotiating table. Wouldn't you agree that's a benefit? All right. So... Emphasize negotiations when you're talking to them, and then take the time to learn various negotiating skills. Uh, the next thing they want is, uh, Tracy. What was the book you said? Never Split the Difference. Oh. Never Split the Difference by Chris Foss. Uh, the next thing they, that, that buyers and sellers want is honest and trustworthy. Honest and trustworthy. Um, I, I, I'm a big believer in brand. I think America is still a country of brand buyers, although not as much as it once was. Uh, I think brand is something that uh, brings trust to people. So I would tell you that knowing that the client wants someone that's trustworthy, uh, reference the Keller Williams brand and the fact that we're one of the largest organizations in the world with over 185 agents worldwide. Um, uh, do what you say and say what you do. In other words, if you say, I'm going to call you at 5.30, call them at 5.30. If you say you're going to meet them at 5.30, meet them at 5.30. There are very small things that go into building trust and confidence. Stephen Covey, the, the God rest his soul, the, the, the great author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, um, has a, uh, a, a part of what he says uh, about making emotional deposits, right? He says, make emotional deposits so that when you make an emotional withdrawal, your account's not overdrawn, right? That's, that's, that's really good, right? Make emotional deposits to build trust and confidence. Do what you say and say what you're gonna do, what you do. If you, if you're, if you're set a time you're gonna do something, then do it at that time, right? Present yourself in a in a way that is an honest person. Do you present yourself? Who presents themselves in a way that's dishonest? Raise your hand. 
right? Do you do you cover crossed as an honest person? It's it's a really interesting question, right? It, it really is, right? Tell me some other ways we can we can build the client's confidence in us and being honest and trustworthy. I think that we tell them the truth. So the truth. If something goes wrong, own up to your mistakes. Own up to your mistakes. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. But I'm, here's what I'm going to do. I made that mistake. I will fix it. Yes. Yes. When you when you uh, admit right that you're wrong, right, um, it builds it builds trust. When you and not admit, when you acknowledge that you're wrong, it builds trust. It does. So I think that's a great that's a great point, uh, Holly. And then and then Penny, you you come back and say, you know what, I made that mistake, but here's what I'm going to do to rectify. So the client is looking for someone that is honest and trustworthy. How about your your let's go to this next one, your reputation. That goes in the same category, right? Your reputation. Excuse me, Madeline had a client, uh, has a client that's in escrow is closing next week. She, the, she's a buyer. The buyer submitted an offer. The seller in, in selecting, they, there were five offers. The seller in, in deciding who they were going to select, Google the buyer, the buyers. I thought that was, I, 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 I never heard of that. Kidding? Never. Never. Like, whoa. I had a client Google the, um, uh, the person they accepted, right? They Googled the, uh, the the buyer that they accepted they were going to go to escrow with and who was going to buy their house. But they didn't um, they didn't Google um, the buyers as they were deciding on the counter. -off. If someone Googles you, what are they going to find? Right? If you have reviews or your reviews. There's the Zillow profile we have, right? There's the Realtor.com profile. There is your Facebook page. There's the Homes.com. You with me? There's LinkedIn. You follow me on all that? Make sure all of those profiles are established and online so that when you when a person Googles you, the first five or six things they see are real estate related, right? What's your reputation online? What does Google say about you? What do your clients say about you? It's 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 so critical now to get those testimonials. To get those testimonials, we're trying to build trust and and confidence, and our reputation is going to dictate that. Have your clients, even you know what, even if they are old clients, right? They're probably happy and satisfied, and they've forgotten about whatever issue happened at the end of close of escrow, and they're settled in, right? Go back and ask them for a review so that you could build, again, build your reputation online. And then we can always speak to the KW reputation. Like I mentioned earlier doing uh, Fritz's pitch that um, if you are new and you don't have a, a record of success, speak to the office of success. Right. Speak to the fact that we're one of the most successful companies in Southern California, that we represented over 600 clients last year, that we, you know, uh, we've been in business for over 35 years in this location, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Build the reputation on that. What do you say when, when, when a client wants to select a friend or family member? What's your... What's your but, but Bob, you know we uh, we we like you. We want to we you know we enjoy what you're saying. But I think I'm going to list with my cousin. Oh, okay. Well, you want to list with your cousin? Okay, yeah, I think so. What is your cousin uh, work at? What city? Um, it's some initials. PXE or something real estate. PXE. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what city are they in? What city are they work? Uh, they're in Culver City. Culver City. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you guys are looking in Lebanon again. Yeah. We're looking, yeah. Well, you know, um, here's what will happen. Well, what I can do is I can work with your cousin. Right? He's in Culver City. He's quite busy. He doesn't have time to go down to Lebanon again. 
and look for homes for you, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what I can do is I can work closely with them and we can work together. You know, I can give them, you know, uh, we can share the you know commission with them and then I can help you down here, but I'll keep them in the loop as far as everything's going on. And that's good. Go from there. Where's that? that that's that's good. That sounds good. So do you see that? So so Bob took the approach that he's just going to pay the other agent a referral fee and and not put up the, the resistance that they want to use your cousin, right? I get that. That's good, right? Because you don't know how close the cousin, he and his, the, the cousin is. They could be really close and, and you know, they feel obligated to use them, right? Um, the the idea of what, what came to mind for me is that uh, are we getting the business of our friends and family? No. Right? They want to use friends and family. Yeah. But... Are we each individually capturing? No, probably, right? They're waiting for you to just like stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Say that again. They're waiting for you to succeed. Yeah. And then they're going, oh, I guess she. Yeah. So, so if the consumer wants to use their friend, their, their friends and family, but if they recognize that you're new, they're going to know that you're new because mm -hmm. you're your friends and family. One of the things that you want to do is present to them that you're part of a larger organization, that you, you have the advantage of a mentor, you have different team leaders, your overall experience is greater than it is you as an individual. Do you get that? Individually, you may be new and inexperienced, but overall, as part of a larger group, you're able to service them so they can relax. But I want to make sure that we are, and I think Fritz, right, have met, the have mets that he talked about, these are our friends and family, right? And he also talked about not taking it too casually, right? There's a presumption that our friends and family are automatically going to call us. Have you, have you had a scenario where your friends and family didn't call you? How'd it feel? It stings a little bit, right? It seems a little bit. So make sure that we are connecting with our sphere, our friends and family, because they want to use us. They do. They have some obstacles if they know you're new, if they don't know the success. That's why I think it's important to, if you're on a team, it's easier because you can grab a team listing, but to grab some information that speaks to the success of the office and make sure you're pushing that success out to your database, inclusive of your friends and family, right? If we take a new list, share, Penny takes a new listing in, in Rossmore and you see it on Facebook, share it, right? Share it with someone and and with your friends and family and so that they know, yes. We were doing the social media um, class last week and she said that doing things uh, real estate related, putting videos and things like that on Facebook and Instagram, that's where your friends and family see you and you're working. So they, they, they think that you're more active and you're, you know, got experience. And all yes. That. So it's really yeah. yeah. I think you can, they, they, they won't distinguish the difference between your listing and someone else's. They're just seeing that you're involved in real estate. Mm -hmm. Because listen, there's 490,000, call it 500,000 agents in California. 500,000 agents. The cost is to get your real estate license from start to finish is less than $1,000. So everyone knows someone who has a real estate license and most of the people that they know aren't active, right? They're a, uh, they work at another job and they have a license and they dabble. So we as professionals, need to enhance our image in the minds of the buyer more than ever, more than ever, right? Fritz said something interesting again about wanting to pre uh, present to the buyer, I'm paraphrasing, but present to the buyer just as he's presenting to a seller, right? Treat the buyers as you do. We all treat sellers differently, right? This is recorded. I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> but we all, we right? Wh why do we do that? It's an easy answer. Why do we treat sellers with, with more reverence than buyers? 
west side of the dotted line to do what? To do what? Nice. To do what? Goes back to Southern bias. We've never really enforced a bias agreement with them for a listing because we know they have to sign. They are committed. And, and as a result of them being committed, they're going to do what? We're going to do what? And, and as and as a result of working for them, we're going to get paid. The sellers pay us. When we approach a seller, we approach them as if there's someone who's going to pay us. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. the buyer. The, we have to approach the buyer the same way now, right? We have to approach them the same way. If you're doing an open house and a buyer walks in, right? Let's say it's last year. Buyer walks in and they may have some interest and then they walk out and you go, oh, whatever. If a neighbor walks in and says, we're thinking about moving, how are you going to treat them? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. You're going to be, right? You're going to be, and, and what, I, what I'm saying to you is that now the, the buyers are going to pay us. There was one form I wanted to put out, but we're still trying to get a, a working to get a best practices um, approach together as a company. Um, as it relates to the buyer uh, representation agreement. Uh, and so we're working through that. But one thing, there's a um, ABC, Anticipated Broker Compensation Disclosure, ABCD, right? And in that disclosure, it discloses how much the buyer is going to pay in commission. That's the first time ever that we've dealt with that as an industry, right? We meet a buyer and we say to the buyer, don't worry, who pays my who pays my commission? Sellers so the seller's seller's gonna pay our commission. Well, that's no longer an automatic. It's no longer an automatic. And then even if the seller does pay the, the, the compensation, there is still that disclosure. So the buyer is still going to be aware that for their nine hundred thousand dollar house, we're gonna get paid twenty two thousand five hundred dollars. By the way, if you make a hundred thousand dollars a year, right? That's that's eighty five hundred dollars a month. So we're going to get paid three months of salary for that person. Respect them because we're asking a lot of them. give them a lot. Give them a lot because we're asking a lot in return. We get paid handsomely, right? So it's incumbent upon us to over deliver in terms of what we're providing. Friends or family, they they want to work with friends and family, we have to make sure that we're capturing that. Knowledge of the neighborhood. Knowledge of the neighborhood. Um, the numbers. The numbers, right? Di really understanding the numbers. Now, the consumer can get the general number, right? They can go to Zillow. They can go to Realtor.com. They can go to these various places and get some, some basic numbers. But how about how much the property is appreciated how much, how about how much properties have appreciated in a given area over the last six or 12 months? That's not easily available to them, right? Knowing days on the market, it's not easily available to them. Here's my favorite, the appreciation. Because when I ask them to pay me two and a half percent, right? By the way, if the seller pays the commission going forward, no big deal, right? Anything other than that is going to require some finesse, right? So if the buyer is going to pay 2.5% or $20,000, right, um, I want to make that number go away for them. Do you get that? I want to make that number become insignificant. Uh, for example, if you're representing a seller and they bought in 2003 and they're selling in uh, 2023, that property's gone up three X. They, they bought it for, you know, at least two and a half times. They bought it for 600,000 and now it's worth 1.5 million, right? So for you to ask for 30,000, for your fee to be 30,000 of the $900,000 it's appreciated, it's not a big ask. Do you get that? That's why the, the seller has always paid the commission because they've always had the money. They've always had the equity. Right, they always paid from their equity, so now the buyers are going to be asked to pay from their 401k or from their savings account or from their checking account. It's a different ask, 
But I think one way we can work through that is to tell them that over the last five years, properties have appreciated on average four and a half percent per year. I always like to use it half percent. It sounds like you know like more than you do, right? Sometimes I do four and three quarter percent too, right? But if you can say that if you buy this property today at 800,000, based on historical data, in five years, it's gonna be worth 1.2 million. It's gonna have gone up 400%. So, I'm sorry, uh, go up 400,000. So if your property's gonna appreciate that much, to pay me two and a half percent to negotiate the best deal for you doesn't seem like a big ask. That makes sense? Knowing the numbers, right, it makes a difference. And then again, knowing the neighborhood. If you're working in Rossmore, um, there's different floor plans and there's different things that are that are happening there, right? There's cost per square footage. Uh, there's the cost of being on a busy street. There's the cost of being on Rossmore. I'm sorry, on Martha Ann, it's right by the 605, right? Knowing the neighborhood in terms of real estate prices makes a difference. If it's a track home, knowing the different model number. Right? The beauty of, 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 of where we are now is that we have access to all the data. It just takes a little time to dig in and work on that sort of shit. It does. It, it really takes a little bit of due diligence to dig in and work on it. So, uh, and then local schools. This used to be such a big thing, uh, the school district. I mean, that's why Rossmore is essentially, you know, Rossmore, for example. Uh, El Dorado Park Estates, where I lived and raised my kids, they went to Newcomb Academy. It's the schools, knowing the schools. Now, of course, the consumer today has all the access to the schools, but you need to make reference to the schools. You need to acknowledge that. They know it, but they want to make sure that you know. Right. So if you're in Bixby Knowles or if you're in Cal Heights and you can make reference to Hughes or uh, is it not Lowell, Longfellow, if you're in Naples, you make reference to Lowell, make reference to the schools. Right. And if you're really good, know who the principal is and reference their name. Right. Mrs. McCann does a great job at Lowell Elementary. She has. Right. Make reference to that. That's not very difficult to do. It's not. They want someone with a caring personality and a good listener. Sounds like Match.com. But... <laughs> a caring personality and a good listener. How do we? How do we? How do we project that? Right. Ask questions. <laughs> Ask questions. <laughs> Open-ended <laughs> open open questions. Repeat there, repeat and affirm, right? So you're looking for a three bedroom, right? Okay, repeat it. A good listener, right? By the way, do you project, I asked earlier, do you project yourself as an honest person? It's kind of rhetorical, don't answer. It, right? Do you project as an honest person, <laughs> right? Uh, do you do you project, project as a caring personality, right? Are you a good listener? What's a good listener, buddy? Somebody that's not waiting to talk. Okay. Or talking over you. Or talking over you. Okay. What's a good listener? Anybody else? That's when you repeat an affirmative, that's that's one way of letting them know you're listening. How, or you can be an active listener. Right, an active listener every now and then will go, uh huh, okay, right, to let them know that you're listening, right, be a good listener. And then, listen, when you're, when you make reference to things they've told you along the way, right, make reference. Uh, anybody good at remembering folks' names? <laughs> no. Yeah. What was her name this morning? Oh. Natalie. Natalie. <laughs> right? Make a, a one of the ways. To... Lenny. See, I can remember that. So, is that really? <laughs> oh, it's on the door. So, if, if, if they tell you, if you hear their kids' names, right? Or if you hear their spouse's name, right? Um, use it. Use it, right? 
So is is your husband going to join us? Is your wife going to join us? Sounds a little informal, right? Hey, is 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 Dan going to join us? Is is Sue going to join us? Right? Let them know that you're listening. Let them know that you're listening. Right? They are buying a house and moving from somewhere. By the way, I saw an interesting statistic in preparation for this. What would you say? What would you say is the distance someone moves when they buy a house from their old address? Ten miles. Ten miles. Less than five. Less than five. It's right in. It, it was. It it went down uh, from from twenty twenty two from fifty miles to twenty miles. Because remember, why why was 50 miles? Because COVID, right, had had lower interest rates and people moving further out because they were working from home. So all of a sudden it opened things up. But generally speaking, um, people stay in their same neighborhood. They stay in their same community. They don't they don't venture very far away, right? Um, but being a good listener, so does anyone know what mirroring and matching is? Okay, so mirror and match, right? And listen, if, if you, I don't know how you feel about it. it you know, some people, I, I, I taught a class on that, and some people will say, well, that's a little, you know, deceiving or it's a little salesy or no, no, you're just, listen, you meet somebody on match or plenty of fish or whatever. <laughs> Hey, I have friends. My friends tell me. Right? Uh, uh, it's a friend. My first son, right? When you meet someone new, right, and you're trying to get in rapport with them, mirror and match them. If they talk very fast, then you increase your rate of speech. If they talk slow, then you lower your rate of speech. If you're sitting down, like I could do with Bob, and I would just eventually, I wouldn't do it, obviously, but eventually I would end up sitting like him. I would put my arm back on my chair. If I was talking to Tracy, I would sit there, I'd cross my legs, I kind of, you know. If I was talking to Tanya, I'd eventually go like that. Right? That's mirroring and matching. Right? It is, it's fun. It's fun. It's, you know, and before you know it, they walk away and they go, well, I don't really like that guy. They don't know why. They can't really put their finger on it, but it's because you have gotten in the rapport with them, right? You are speaking it. Um, if uh, it's so, it's so interesting. It's kind of reversed. If a New Yorker went to Kentucky to do a presentation, right? He would, he or she would have to really slow down a bit if they were hoping to get in rapport. Does that make sense? Right. Now, if a person from Kentucky went to New York, I'm not sure what they would do. <laughs> not, right? They, you know what? They probably, if they, if they would just relax and let the Kentucky come out, it, it might be a little enduring. You know, that that southern kind of thing is a little enduring. Is uh, not to New York. So mirror and mirror and matching. Right. If they talk fast, you talk a little slow. Right. By the way, I do this on my emails. I give you a tip on my email. So if someone emails me and they say, hi, Stefan, when I email them, I'll say, hi, Penny. If they say, hello, Stefan, I'll say, hello, Penny, right? I'll use whatever, whatever, is it a salutation? Whatever, what, whatever uh, greeting, they, yeah, whatever greeting they use, I'll use the same, I, and I'll, I'll purposely go back and look at the top of their email and see what they did. I do this, tell you guys all my secrets. Sure, right? sure. <laughs> So for my group, if you see, I do that on my texts often too. If you say hey or hi, I'll say hey or hi. If you say good morning, I'll say good morning, right? Mirroring and matching. We're trying to get into rapport so that we can build trust and confidence. One of the challenges I have, and be careful with this, is that I get a little too close, right? I do this professionally and professionally. In other words, I do it with clients and then with my internal group. I'm changing that, by the way, so just forewarning. So, uh, uh, but be careful because you want to you want to draw uh, a line uh, between friendship and professionalism. 
Because if you get too close to them, they won't take your advice as ready because they'll view you as someone too close, right? So maintain that line. But uh, marrying matching, uh, again, they want caring personality and good listener, right? Caring personality, good listener. Marrying matching, how about being a good person? Be a good person. Right? Be a good person. Treat others well. Treat everybody with respect, right? Hold the door for people, right? Say thank you, right? Be a good person. Uh, active listening, we talked about that. Uh, now listen, don't worry very much. This is one of the things that's the beauty of, of what we do. Uh, if you were selling, like I did in my previous life, I sold computer systems for IBM to manufacturers and distributors. And so I was typically calling on the CEO or the CFO of small businesses, right? And they were all pretty much the same personality, right? And so if my personality didn't match, then I didn't have as much of an ability to get in before. Do you get that? The beauty of what we do is that we sell to the entire population. Right. And there's basically 16 personality types. Right. And there's variations with, uh, uh, of each, but there's 16. You're going to find people that are compatible with you. You don't have to be like this person to be a successful salesperson. You don't have to be like that person to be a successful salesperson. You could just simply be you. And there are enough people in the marketplace that are like you that you'll get in rapport with that allow you to get your 12, 24, 36, 48 transactions a year, whatever you're looking for, right? Just be you, but be a good person, right? Timely and responsive. This is probably one of consumers' biggest complaints about us is that we don't communicate very well. You know what happens on the communication side, by the way? Things don't go well, and we have, and then it gets harder Right? If you don't call them on day two, before you know it, it's day 22. And then what do you say? You usually make up a story or a fib. And what's the L word? A lie. A lie. Like, oh, I uh, broke my leg with the ski trails. I'm healed now. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Lying is difficult unless you're a sociopath. So, so don't, don't, don't do that. Choose another, choose another way. And the best way is to communicate often in a timely way. And by the way, this all gets back to building trust and, 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 and confidence in them, right? Uh, set the expectation of being someone that responds to them in a timely way. Set the expectation. And then I learned this from someone recently. I think it was... But they said that if someone responds to you via text, then respond via text. If they message you on Facebook, then message them on Facebook. If they email you, email. If they call you, they call you. But the consumer wants us to be timely and responsive. And I think what they're saying is that um, they, they want to be kept in the loop as we're going through the escrow process. There's nothing worse than calling a client to find out you've been bad, you haven't followed up, you haven't kept communication going, and you've told them, only to find out that they already knew what you were doing. Oh. But they learned that five days ago. Oh. Then you are in, you're in a poo poo week and you're sinking. Oh. That is just, I cringe just saying, if they already know the bad news. You but you're days. waiting five days to tell you them. Try to get, try to fix it instead of calling them straight away, and then they've got it second down. That makes it worse. It makes it worse, right? Respond to your clients. Over communicate, right? Over communicate. It's it's one of the things that people dislike about salespeople is the lack of communication. We want to over communicate. Right? Make it a point when you're working with someone to touch, to touch them and touch bases with them at least once a week, right? At least once a week. If it's a buyer, if it's a seller, if, if it's a, you know, somebody in escrow, at least once a week you want to touch bases with them, right? Touch bases with them. Timely and responsiveness, that's something they're looking for 
That's something we can do. Uh, they want us to be accessible 100% of the time. Now, that doesn't mean they, they email us at 9 o'clock and we email them back at 9 o'clock. But that does mean if they email us at 9 o'clock, that to, the next morning we're going to email them back. Does that make sense? Right? Yeah. Is there a boundary? We were, tell me your name. Teresa. Teresa, we were talking about that uh, during the. Okay, I just. No, 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 no. No, 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 during the script and role play. So that's, I'm glad you brought that up because we're in the same. You're asking, is there a timeline when you, a uh, time, a day when you I should cut it? Yeah. Like, like what hour are they? That you actually respond yeah. back to that. I, I, so tell me about your, your, uh, your doctor. What time can you call them? Okay. Right. Right. There's a there's a time frame. Penny, what, what do you say your, your time frame is where you will respond or not respond? Um, I cut off at um, nine o'clock during the weekdays, but we tend to I cut off at six. Okay. Okay. So that's good. And that's the expectation. No, as soon as I need something, this is not hours. Yes. 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 Set the expectation. Right, establish an expectation of responding time. Set the expectation in the beginning. Right. So Teresa, you, you know, um, we're going to be working together for the next forty-five days. I'm so excited. Let me give you a little bit of an idea of, of, of how I work. I am available um, uh, via text, emails, or phone calls. Um, typically, if it's after nine o'clock, right, then I'll respond the next day. That's kind of how I work. Uh, you can always text me, and if, if I can't get back to you, I will. But if it's after nine, typically it'll be the next day. Right. I'm I'm probably halfway through a very good bottle of Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. So, like, <laughs> I I I I, 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 I call them, I call them back at nine o'clock, and we're on the phone till eleven o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> and we've solved all the world's problems and uh, etc. So. Um, establish a great question because somebody raised the question this morning. Establish what your time frame is. By the way, I think it really goes a long way in building your your brand as someone that they have to respect, mm -hmm. right? They have to respect the fact that you set your boundaries. You know, hey, I'm, I'm typically with my family on the weekends, and uh, you know, I'll probably respond at six thirty or seven. If it's an emergency, if we get a late counter offer back and the agent doesn't get it back until 10 o'clock at night, I'll probably text you and say, we have a counter offer. Do you want to talk about it now? Or do you want to talk about it in the morning? If that's okay with you, right? There are certain things that are going to be sensitive to time, but for the most part, establish something. But the client wants us to seem, that was the word, it said seems 100% accessible. And you want to present that. They can text you, they can email you, they can call you. If it's an emergency, you'll get back to them. If it's not, you'll respond the next day at a certain time. Does that make sense? Company affiliation. Company affiliation. We uh, we have an excellent comp structure here, right? Our comp plan is is uh, is uh, one of the factors in choosing uh, our company. Certainly. Right, uh, but it's not the primary in my mind. The primary in my mind is the environment and the products and services that are provided that will allow us to become successful. At the end of the day, you still have to sell houses. If you're getting a hundred percent of one deal or you're getting eighty percent of ten deals, you pick. That's not a that's not a trick question. It's not a tough one. Right? But but comp is something um, that that uh, that that drives us for sure. Another thing that drives us is our size, our size. Our size allows us to have that excellent comp plan, but still have all the products, the tools and services of uh, uh, companies with more of a traditional structure, right? Um, so consumers want to know who you are and, and who's representing you. We're Keller Williams Realty. We're 165,000 agents in the country. We're 185, 190,000 agents worldwide. Uh, we have the products, the tools, and services to help you through uh, your transaction. 
There's nothing that will get in the way of that, right? Reference, reference the company affiliation. Uh, and then let them know that our founder, Gary Keller, is fond of saying that we are a training and consulting company. So, Mr. Byer, I can't tell you how many hours we spend training. Right? I mean, we are constantly training. And the benefit to you is that as changes occur in our business, we're at the forefront of those changes, right? As I'm sure you've heard, there's a change relative to our representation of buyers and the commission structure associated with that. In our office, we have been talking about that since April. We have been preparing for that since April, so we're here to service you. Right? They want to know what company you're with, study what we have, who we are, and be able to articulate that. And then they want to know that we're active in the community. Right? That we're active in the community. And you, you don't necessarily have to personally be active, but you want to know what's going on in the community. You want to know what's happening in Seal Beach. When is the, uh, when is the, what's happening for Labor Day in your community? What's happening for Memorial Day in your community? What's the latest news that's going on? Are you active in the community? Do you know what's, do you know what's going on? I think if you have a geographical farm, for example, that uh, uh, having a relationship with the, with the schools in that farm is paramount, right? Most of the, so many of the people that will come in there will come in and they'll, they'll need to make use of the schools. Having a relationship with the schools is important. Being active in the community. Knowing the local news. I don't watch the local news on television. I, I, I'm more involved in the world news and, and international news and politics, et cetera. But, but knowing what's happening in the local community, right? Um, I have a friend, she, she, doesn't, she doesn't really pay attention to the news that much. And so I always give her a hard time about it because um, she does business across the country. And, uh, and she's, I noticed she just recently that she changed on something. But the last thing you want to do is call someone in Florida. And they say, how are you doing? And you say, oh, great. It's a beautiful Southern California day. It's about 82 degrees. Or whatever. And they just had a hurricane the day before. Are you going to build rapport? Mm -hmm. Right? No. Right? Knowing what's happening in the community, knowing what's happening around the world makes a difference. So um, how about hosting real estate events? Heidi and Leslie do that very well um, uh, in our group. Uh, hosting real estate events. Um, having an event for people who want to talk about living trust. Right? You can do it on Zoom. You can do it on purpose, on, on, uh, in person. Um, how about a recycling day? Right, have you seen those? You set up, you go to a big area, and then bring it, right? Hosting real estate events will keep you active in the community and, and go a long way in, uh, in letting people know you're active. And then lastly, it comes down to this, right? It comes down to our mantra, Keller Williams. It's win, win, or no deal. Uh, it's integrity, which is do the right thing. It is the customer always comes first. Commitment in all things. Communication, again, Stephen Covey, seek first to understand. Right? Most of the time when we're communicating with people, we can't wait to get them to understand us. Right? And that's why we talk over them. That's why uh, the minute they stop talking, we start talking. Because we haven't really taken into consideration what they said. We're just waiting for that pause. Right? I've been working on that flaw for about 30 years now, right? And so now I, I started to incorporate a breath in between my response. So when someone says something to me, I take a breath and then respond, right? So um, seek first to understand. Uh, creativity. It's, uh, I, it should be ideas, not ideals. I, before results. And then um, teamwork, together everyone achieves more. Trust starts with honesty. And then success results through people, right? This is, this is the Keller Williams mantra. It is printed uh, on the hub. It is printed on the back of the folders. And I think if we take that approach to the buyers, 
then we will prevail. Again, um, this is a significant change, right? Uh, but the reason I'm excited about it, and I and Benny and, and Ali and folks will tell you I've been probably overly fired up about it, is because when something like this occurs, most of the people just kind of go away. They just kind of let it overwhelm them, right? You can choose to do a presentation to the buyer and ask them for money, or you can choose not to and go, ah, I really wasn't in a What's her, is her name, Kendra Miller? Do you know who that is? Yeah. Yeah, who is she? Not Kendra Miller. Kendra's in this office, right? Yeah, Kendra's in this office. No, I'm thinking of the, um, the television star. She's uh, She has a reality show. She used to be a Playboy bunny. Kendra, Kendra Wilkinson. Kendra yeah. Wilkinson. Uh, I just read that she's out of the business. She is? Uh, yeah, just, just announced. Did she, she have a show? On yeah, she has a show she's selling. Selling. Sunset or something? Not selling no, Sunset. No, selling Hollywood. Selling, yeah. So she's decided to get out. Um, I see, I, she's going to focus more time on her family and stuff. I think it's the bio-representation group that drove her out of her thing. So uh, the, the industry is going to go through a change. A lot of people are, are, are not going to adapt to that change, and that's okay. But we are. We are. We've been talking about it since April. Chris did a great job on it. Uh, uh, Simon and Hallie are going to do another class on the, on the actual forms. I don't think it's that hard of a pivot. I don't. I think that we present to our buyers the same way we've always presented to our sellers with a great deal of respect, right? We, and when we go on a seller presentation, we list all the things that we're going to do, right? And why they should represent us. When we do a buyer presentation, I think we mostly list the things that happen through the process, right? I don't think we tie what we do through that process. By the way, another list came out that I saw from NAR, and uh, it were five things. The two things that stuck out with me that consumers were looking for was, one, the ability to negotiate. There were three things. The ability to negotiate, uh, honest, right? And then the third out of the five was familiar with the process. Familiar with the process, the escrow process. If you have a first-time buyer, it's daunting. Right? I think in California, the average is like nine and a half years people move. So if you last moved in 2015, you're probably not all that familiar with the process. It'll come back to you right as you're going through it, but you're not necessarily as familiar with it. So emphasize our ability to walk them through the process is another feature. All right. Is it going to be easier for me that I'm new that? I don't know the previous process and that's going to be, or it's just going to be over more overwhelming because it's a lot harder. I, I, I be a little bit much more uh, moldable, trainable. Yeah. We're yeah. Is it new. just going to be, I'm just not that, even, yeah, looking at that. I'm just focusing on what's ahead. The answer to a question is yes. Okay. It, it's yes. It's yes either way. Right. Okay. Um, but I believe that because you don't have, um, I don't want to say bad habits, right? Huh? Baggage. Baggage. That's worse than bad. <laughs> because because you don't have a you don't have a mold to break. No. Right. Yeah. You, you're creating your mold. I think it's going to be easier. Okay. I do. I think it's it's just the way it is. Right. It is. It's just the, the way. It is. It's just the way it is. This okay. is the way that that we've done it. Uh, and it's and listen when Fritz touched on this again. One of the things that's going to be very cool is that everybody has to sign. It. I had a similar experience, and I will confess, I don't think I asked ever again. <laughs> the first time, I'll never forget this guy and his wife, and he said to me, "Why would I sign that?" And I didn't. I was I was new, so when you're new, you do what you're told. Somebody told me to have him sign this retainer, so I tried to get it, get him to sign. I didn't really have a script or a rebuttal, right? And I asked him to sign it. He said, why would I sign that? And that was it. I never, I never asked again, right? And now we don't have to deal with that because everyone has to sign it. Do you get that? It's going to be protocol. It's, it's, it's what we do. So don't worry about that part. 
we're going to put together some business practices and best ways to approach addressing the issue. We're still fleshing that stuff out. Um, but I think it is critical. I'm going to go through. These one more time, right? Let's take a look at those one more time. That comes directly from the consumer, right? And you know what I love about most of this stuff, right? This is not this is not production based things, right? This is something each of us can work on and practice today, right? Each of us can work on becoming better at negotiating price and terms. We can all work on being honest and trustworthy. We can build our reputation online. We can make sure that we don't miss that business from our family and friends, right? Learn the neighborhood, be good listeners, respond timely, be available, uh, articulate our association with Keller Williams and why that's valuable, and then being active in our community, all right? Um, there were, I don't know how many people at the sales meeting, twice as many as, as that are here. And I understand our time is valuable. It really is. I can appreciate it so much. Friday is not payday. Right? It's not. We have to go create it. Right? And then once we create it, we have to nurture it for 30 days or so. Right? And then we have to, you know, collect the money, get it to Cindy, get it through the system, get the check, get in the account, and then pay everybody and then repeat <laughs> right repeat so you taking the time to be here is not lost to me and i greatly appreciate it uh, reach out to me if you have any questions any thoughts that come to mind so thank you very much everybody thank Yes. Yeah.